Hey guys, and welcome to episode number six of the Airsoft Podcast. Uh, we're here with, uh, we have our new co-host, Shady, from Shady's Gas Blowback Tech. Hey guys, how's it going? I'm glad to be here for the first time. Hopefully See, I'll be around for a while. <laughs> See how we, be, we, uh, have Shady and Matt, who got called into work at 2.30, so he was not able to come and record with us. But uh, those are our two new co-hosts, as uh, Henry, or Fluffy Boy, had a, was getting too busy to do it, so he had to step down, and yeah. So, we are doing it a lot more organized now. It's not going to be just uh, random chat messing around. Uh, we have, um, also, on this episode, we have an interview with Brian from uh, Airborne Milsim, or Mil or Merlin's blog, he was nominated in the top five of uh, blogs, airsoft blogs in the world on uh, Players' Choice Awards this year. So if you guys haven't voted, make sure you go vote for his blog as it's a great blog and Airborne Milsim is a really cool program. So he'll be able to tell you a little bit more about that. And uh, if you want to, you should go check out our Facebook page. It's www.facebook.com, Facebook slash the Airsoft Podcast. Uh, give us a like. Um, we post all our links up there, some polls and uh, stuff. It's a way to keep up with us. Uh, you can also, if you have any um, emails that you want to uh, send us, like news links or anything that you want us to talk about, you can send it to shadytap at gmail.com or willbetap at gmail.com. And TAP stands for the Airsoft Podcast, in case you didn't know. Um, or if you have any business-related emails, send those to the Airsoft Podcast at gmail.com. And also subscribe to our YouTube. Uh, we are still working on getting RSS feed so we can put our podcast up on iTunes, but that is a work in progress. And uh, is there anything else you want to say before we start off? Uh, make sure you also look on our Facebook page as all these reviews that we'll be doing. We'll be posting up albums with the photos and etc. on there if you're listening to it once we get iTunes set up instead of watching it on YouTube. Yep, and then make sure you go check out uh, Shady's page, Shady's Gas Blowback Tech. Um, so yeah, and we're gonna move. Link up on the uh, Facebook page here shortly for that. All right, and so we're gonna move into news. Hey guys, and welcome to our news part of the uh, podcast. Um, uh, Shady, you want to kick it off? Yeah, uh, the first thing we've got today is that from airsofttoday.com, Vega Force Company, also known as VFC, is, uh, is actually releasing a DMR or a sniper kit for their new HK417 replica. It's going to include a 28-inch rail handguard, and it's going to include a flip-up front sight, as well as an elongated outer barrel. Um, I'm looking for. I've been itching to get a hold of the VFC 417 ever since I saw that they were going to release some. So as soon as I get one of those, I'll probably be itching and grabbing one of these sniper kits just for funsies. So I'll be sure once I get that done to give you guys a review on it. So I'm looking at it in um, on the extended uh, outer barrel, which basically just gives you the. Op it looks like it just screws into your threads and gives you the option for a longer barrel. Is that right? Or is it yes. actually? It's gonna be. Um, that's just gonna screw into your extended outer, into your regular outer barrel threads. I don't believe they're inc they're not gonna include an inner barrel on that. Of course, they're just gonna rely on you to get a long, longer type bore, which really isn't a bad idea. Because I, from what I've seen on the VFC 417, when I was playing Reindeer Games 11 last month, uh, with somebody guy, somebody had one out there, and I was highly impressed by the range he was getting. With this, you can install a type bore barrel as opposed to the already accurate barrel that's in there. Which will already, which will increase the accuracy of your gun and make it better again overall. Does the longer barrel does that not? Would that not increase your FPS or lower it? Uh, the longer uh, the longer barrel won't have so much of an effect on your FPS as the bore of the barrel will. Okay. The, you know, the side of the bore of the barrel, the yeah. higher your FPS. So, so long as you're using a, I mean, it, you know, FPS really isn't that much of an increase anyway, depending on bore size. There's a lot more that goes into your FPS than the bore size. That's the lot, that's the lowest FPS increaser you really have. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know too much about the inner workings of AEG, so I, if I'm wrong, I'd love to have a, use, uh, a listener come on and correct me. That'd be awesome. And but you know, Type Four barrel will definitely increase your accuracy. So that's always going to be an upgrade, especially since you're upgrading to a sniper or DM or kit. Accuracy is key for that. Yep. And uh, 
I was just browsing around on Airsoft today, and they had a link to the Tominator's blog, and he had an article up about KWA, and I know Shady's not a huge fan of KWA, but... <laughs> but... <laughs> what? That's putting it rather mildly, don't you think? Yeah, just... Just keep being mild. But KDWA is le releasing a Sphinx STD STP, which stands for Special Duty Pistol Compact. And it's not... It's... The gun is meant to be, like, really, really comfortable. It has the uh, finger grips. And um, it's looks it looks like it's going to be a fantastic pistol if it comes out to be what... Or at least externally, what the um, real Sphinx looks like. It's going to be interesting to see it because it's compact... It has a to me. It looks similar to a compact USP, just more ergonomic. Um, I think it'll be interesting to see this come out um, to KWA markets. And um, also on KWA, they released that they are going to be making a AG Chris Vector. Um, so if you're not a gas blowback fan for rifles, um, they will be. And or if you live where. We live, and you can only use your gas blowback rifles for like six months out of the whole year, uh, just because of the cold weather. Which Oklahoma is basically there's not really any set weather. It's cold one day, hot the next, so it's uh, pretty inconsistent. But uh, AG Chris Vector will be pretty cool. I'm not exactly sure how it's gonna work because <laughs> it seems like it's gonna be hard to house a house a gearbox with how it's built. I don't know if you have any opinions on that. Um, based on the looks of it, I don't think housing a gearbox would be too difficult because it's got that really wide range in between the trigger and your magazine. So a gearbox, I mean, they could probably throw a version 6 type gearbox for a, like a P90 in there and make it work pretty decent. The thing I'm more concerned about is battery space, honestly. Mm -hmm. because obviously, there's not going to be much room for a battery. Uh, they're probably going to run on stick type battery or an A80 video I felt. Yeah. Of course, you've also got those rails on there that you might be able to do a peck type mount. Yeah, I'm not sure where they could put a battery because there's not really that much room, and the stock is there's no way you could put a battery in that. Um, there's not really any room in the body. I mean, what do you think about putting ma uh, batteries in the magazine like they do on some saws? Um, I've seen it work all right on the saw, you know, because it's got the drum magazine. You know, you're not going to really reload that much, and when you do, you're just going to open up the magazine and pour another bag of BBs in. However, um, I believe it was ICS did it on their grease, it was either ICS or Ares did it on their grease gun, and I'm not quite sure how well that goes because of having to, when you're doing mag changes, you're having to disconnect and reconnect a battery. It's just going to make your mag changes go a lot slower. Right. And since the vector is, and even the grease gun, is more intended for a CQB type scenario where things move and happen really, really fast. You have the extra time that it's going to take to change the battery at the same time as you change your magazine can you know make or break your game right there. Yeah. So it should be interesting. I'm not 100% sure how they're going to do it. It's just speculation. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty exciting for the AEG fans because I know a lot of people do not like using gas blowback rifles due to the fact of winter will make them where they're unusable. Um, but... It's still a cool rifle as a gas blowback. It's fun to shoot if you're just plinking, or if you if you do have the money to uh, buy a summer gun and a winter gun, it's fun to use. Um, it's it it was really good. Whenever I mean, it's it's not exactly living up to the hype it was because the hype was just so high that I don't know if any gun could actually live up to it. But it was a, it is it is decent, and I'm uh, it's a really cool model. I think they. Um, design of it's a cool CQB gun the way it's built um, but going on they also um, since they had to take up H&K went on their uh, lawsuit and they had to take KDWA took all their H&K products off their website um, but to make up for that they are they uh, released that they are now going to collaborate with LWRC and make some guns um, from the sounds of things they're going to make both AEG and gas systems um, that's a direct quote from Tominator's blog um, but so it should be interesting to see what actually comes out of this I know Classic Army I believe has made some LWRC's and many other companies um, so it should be interesting I don't know if you have any other opinions on that but um, nothing on the LWRC really but going back to the Vector um, the field I play at down here in Texas uh, Fast Action Airsoft is a CQB field we had a swap meet back on December 29th, and somebody actually had one of the KWA GBB vectors out there. 
got to handle it up at the Carno station because I had been out there. So I got to I get to toy with a lot of cool stuff out there. You know, especially stuff I can't afford or sucks, <laughs> but you know, everybody has that problem. Yeah. And I found it to be rather uncomfortable. I don't know if that was just me or if they if everybody thinks that way, but. I don't think it'd be something I would look at really look at picking up as opposed to something else I could use for CQB. Um, you know, I have a Scorpion right now, and I also have one of the Well MP5Ks, and I don't even use those too much in CQB. When it comes down to it, I've got my GNP M4, and I've got 12 different sidearms I can pick up, pick on, pick for CQB. So I don't see the point in buying just a CQB gun. Mm. That's part of. Yeah, that's, that's part of the problem with uh, Chris. I mean, yeah, this, the Chris, yeah, throw, throw the silencer on there, throw a longer barrel on there, but yeah, you've got, you could possibly make it effective for field. However, when you have something like, I've got like a, you know, a CQBR G, uh, GMP, that's already adapted that can do both field and CQB without really having to do much to it. Yep. So, uh, what else do you have for your... Uh, let's see, what else? do we have for news today also in the news ASG at SHOT Show 2013 ASG is something that I've been keeping an eye on ever since I saw that they were planning to release a new type of Scorpion, Scorpion Evo this thing is absolutely gorgeous um, there's not too much known about it right now except for the fact that it's going to have full trademarks uh, everything is going to be compatible with the real steel parts of the stock, the front rail, mag release, and the magazine floor plate. All that will be exact real steel. We're actually using the real steel parts on this particular rifle. They haven't really expected a an actual release date yet. They're just speculating around May or June. Uh, this, this will be my next buy, definitely, because this, uh, this is absolutely gorgeous. Um, some of the stuff they want to do with it is kind of interesting. Uh, let me say the details. Where are they? This is on airsofttoday.com as well. Uh, basically, they want to have where it actually features empty magazine, low battery, and gearbox failure detection, as well as an electronically controlled firing system. I'm hoping they've been working on this for a long time because I don't see them being able to do that between now and the May or June release date, because as far as I know, not many, any rifle or gun manufacturers in the airsoft world have that yet, so that would be a relatively new, untested piece of technology. But, should they pull it off correctly, it should be pretty awesome. Yeah, so, that's basically the only thing to worry about is, the new technology coming into a gun could be a problem, but, uh, if they do it right, it's going to be a really cool gun, I think it looks great. Uh, what do you think it looks? I mean, it looks kind of like a G36 and then MP5 kind of UMP. <laughs> it's I don't know. It looks weird. It does. It has an interesting flair to it. Almost looks yeah, like you said, like a G36 and a UMP had a baby. <laughs> yep. It, it's an interesting piece, but it's definitely something I'm gonna look at picking up just because of my love for unique guns. I mean, you've seen the G36 I have. That's just ugly as all hell. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I own two five sevens right now. Mm -hmm. Working on getting a third one if I can just freaking find the 8mm Marotion. Yeah. Well, I think it's, it's going to be a cool gun. It's the length where it's going to be a mix of CQB and field if you decide to do that. Uh, it, and I think it's been at SHOT Show for two years now. Is that right? Two years right now, yeah. Which is kind of a disappointing piece because I believe they did actually say there was going to be a release date last year that did not happen. Yeah. So I'm going to be interested to see if they actually pull off the release date for this year. Which hopefully they will because uh, this is going to be a gun that's, it's, I think it's been covered up a little bit from the Chris for the past couple of years because that's been the big, the big gun that everyone's been excited about. So it has been around, but I think it's been covered up a little bit by some other guns. Uh, and, and ASG is not one of the biggest, they're not like a big name out there. Um, so this gun's going to be really cool to keep an eye on. Um, so yeah, hopefully that'll be pretty good. Well, I was browsing around airsofttoday.com also, and I saw this. It's I looked at it and I was like, "What is this? It's a China-made ZB26. It's a leaked picture. Um, it's honestly, 
it's one of the weirdest guns I've ever seen. It looks, it's the magazines on the top. Um, it's inter it's really interesting. Um, I'll just read directly from Airsoft Today's site. The Viva Arm ZB26 has long been the sole replica, airsoft replica of the Czechoslovak, Czechoslovak light machine gun. However, airsoft so airsoft shop gunsmith baton has recently acquired information concerning a china-made model that may change this not only is a different manufacturer responsible for the replica but the product itself deviates from that of viva arms among the key differences include a unique frame finish in a full-size magazine an official price has not been confirmed for the replica but its release date is expected to be to be in april 2013 and to be honest with you guys, I have never heard of the Viva Arm ZB26. I've never heard of a ZB26, um, which shows how much I know about real steel. <laughs> but so yeah, but, it should be interesting. Um, I don't know really how many people in the U.S. will buy this, just because how funky it looks, and it looks to be a decently sized rifle. It reminds me more of a saw than a light machine gun. Um, but it should be interesting. It's a really weird model, uh, but those are cool. I like seeing those in Airsoft. It's something different than your M4, G36, MP5, uh, AK. Uh, so just something that's different to see on the field. Uh, if you have one on the field, you're going to be known as that guy who has that really cool gun that's way different than everyone else's. Um, so I don't know if you... <laughs> what? I get with my 5.7s already, so I don't need this. <laughs> <laughs> I think... I. Just looking at it, I'm guessing it's going to be pretty expensive. It has a wood stock, wood pistol grip, wood carry handle. Um, we'll have all these links, by the way, in the description so you can check out these yourself. Uh, have your own opinion about them. Um, yeah, price wise, I wouldn't be surprised if this would run up into the price range of, say, the VFC bar. Yeah. Uh, you know, which is about $1,000. So don't expect to see me picking one up anytime soon. <laughs> uh, also, the magazine on top style, I'm not a big fan of. It seems like it was a structure aim a little bit which I mean I understand with the you know saw with a squad automatic weapon you're not really not going to be trying to aim to kill you're just trying to keep people's heads down but every now and then it'd be able to it'd be kind of nice to be able to aim yeah so it's going to be kind of you look at your BBs and see where they're going you're not really looking down any sights uh, because unless you hold your gun sideways which I don't really recommend because that would be pretty hard uh, but I would say man go all call of duty dude <laughs> yeah, or you could just hold it upside down. Then it looked like a regular gun. Mm, mafia. Anyways, uh, make sure you read the hop up. What? Just make sure you readjust the hop yeah, up. Yeah, readjust your hop up. Or else, else you'll be shooting about 25 feet before your bees hit the dust. Uh, so, uh, you want to talk about this GHK Makarov? Yes, GHK is bringing out a Makarov pistol. Now, GHK is a airsoft gun company most well known for their AK. Gas blowback AK, which I believe, correct me if I'm wrong again, was the, the first gas blowback AK on the market. I haven't gotten to handle one yet, but from what I understand, they're quite beautiful. This is going to be interesting because up till now, the only the gas blowback Makarov available, well, not even available yet, is KWAs. So, considering that this will be a new kind of an opponent to the KWA, however, this will be a CO2 powered pistol as opposed to the KWA will be you know green gas propane type power now this should be interesting if they do it right like Elite Force did with their 1911 you know Elite Force is 1911 pretty durable CO2 power but still hits that 350 FPS marking that most fields have for their sidearm limits it's also going to be uh, constructed out of full com completely steel that's going to be a new thing to see a full steel pistol which should be really nice going to have a nice weight to it, and it should have a pretty decent recoil because of the steel. Yep. Nice motorcycle, but uh, <laughs> I think this gun is going to be pretty cool. I think it. I think it's really, really ugly, but um, as for carrying around for uh, CQB or um, uh, close quarter combat, it's going to be cool because it's just it's so short of a pistol that you're going to be able to get around corners really, really fast. And I think it's just going to be fun to own. Um, all steel construction sounds like it's going to be pretty expensive, uh, but there's no price point on it yet. Uh, the other thing this pistol might be nice for is uh, down here I've played a couple of games where 
you can be taken prisoner and they take you know they take your rifle and your pistol from you that you know but they keep it right where you can always see it so of course nothing gets stolen and after a certain amount of time you're released from the prison or whatever and you get your stuff back that kind of thing but if you have another way you say a training knife or something you can try to make a break for it this would be something to keep you know in a nice little hidden pocket up on your vest uh like my APC has that little pocket right behind on my magazine pouch keep that in there pull that and you can use that to make a pretty clean yeah, because it's just it's so com compact of a pistol uh, that you'll be able to conceal carry it pretty well. Uh, so I think it's going to be a, a cool hit to the airsoft market. Um, and hopefully they will do the CO2 right because it can be dangerous if you do not if you do not regulate it. Uh, CO2 is known to be able to get up, up into 450 range. Um, I know from experience that those are not very much fun to be shot by. Uh, partly because the accuracy on them is so terrible whenever you get the high uh, CO2 that is just they <laughs> the BBs pretty much sputter around so uh, you can get hit in the face pretty easily even, even if they're not aiming at you at close distances just because they're not very accurate but hopefully they will regulate it uh, what we're gonna say I've seen CO2 guns I've seen a CO2 revolver you know those uh, flint gun CO2 revolvers yeah. I've seen those break 600 FPS. Yep. So hopefully they will do the CO2 correctly and reduce any issues that they might have with FPS regulation. Because if they don't, then that's going to be a drawback for a lot of people. Uh, because they won't be able to use it in games. It'll just be a plinker in the backyard. Uh, which is, you know. No fun. Yeah, no fun. <laughs> Shooting targets is not very much fun if that's all you can do with the gun. Um and I don't have anything else um, other than I'm just going to mention this. Um, my buddy uh, Renegade Cow from uh, Airsoft Forum and Arnie's Airsoft and a couple other forums, uh, he, ma he had made this China Lake, and I had the pleasure of judging it in the gun contest for Airsoft. Uh, it won. It's a China Lake 40 millimeter grenade launcher that he cr scratch built himself, and it, it was awesome. I uh, you might have seen the video I know on YouTube. It has over 300,000 views, so a few of you may have seen it. It's a beauty, and it's a shell ejecting grenade launcher. It's simply awesome. But what he did is he tried to make a contract with Ares. And they had the contract, they were going through with it. He had sent him the CAD designs and the 3D designs, and then all of a sudden, they, Ares broke the contract, and they asked for pictures of the real steel internals of the China Lake, which is ridiculous. It was never on the contract, and that's ridiculous to ask someone for uh, pictures of the internals of a real steel China Lake. It's uh, stupid. I know I'm not going to buy from Ares because that's to screw someone over who took that time all the time I watched the bill thread to build a China Lake from scratch and it, of such high quality It was simply awesome to try to screw him over whenever he was only he wasn't asking even that much for the designs He was only asking two thousand dollars from them for the designs of this gun and they try to screw him over It's pretty ridiculous that a company would do that I know he's, um, what was good was, part of the contract was, is either side broke the contract, then he, um, Renegade Cow, had the full rights to the design, so they're still his, and he's going to try to contact ICS and GMP, I believe, about making it. Um, it's just pretty sad to see an airsoft company try to break a contract with someone over designs of, a ch of this gun, because uh, I know how much work he put into it, uh, it'd be pretty disappointing. So, um... That's just warning for you guys out there. You can read the whole thread at uh, arniesairsoft.com or airsoftforum.com. I just look up. Uh, it's called Aries Screws Over Screws Me Over Over My China Lake Designs. Uh, it's on thread in both those forums. Uh, if you want to go read more about it, we'll have a link also. Um, I'm just disappointed in them and in, in Aries, even though I probably would never buy from them just because <laughs> I'm not a fan of their guns, anyways. Um, that's one thing he said is he was hoping it would have a more of an impact of people not buying Ares, but because most people don't want to buy Ares anyways because they make crap guns in most cases, um, it wasn't that big of an impact because people don't buy from it anyways. Uh, but that's just something I want to tell you guys uh, so to watch out for. And that's all I have. Do you have anything else? Uh, not right off the top of my head. Uh, I think that pretty much covers what we've got as far as news right now. So, I guess we're going to move into our review section. Uh, Shady's going to talk a little bit about uh, the Lonex M4. Alright, guys. Um, well, 
lot of people you guys out there know Lonex as the upgrade parts manufacturer. Well, they've recently moved into doing a, their own line of AEGs. Um, my brother was, he's been in the airsoft for a couple of years now, and he was looking at getting a real rifle, because up till now he's really had a bunch of crap guns. Yeah, I think his best one that he had was a JG SR-16. So, he was looking and he's like, well, hey, the HK lawsuits, the, you know, the WEG-39 is going for real cheap. I was like, no, you don't want to get a gas gun. You know, I know we live in Texas, but magazines are going to be expensive and you just don't want to do it. Get something that we can use the magazines that we already have. So I was looking around for him, and I got the budget from my parents as far as what for his Christmas present. I found these Lonex M4s. And so I can, can talk to him about it, and we decided to get him the Lonex M4 with standard handguard, 14.5-inch barrel for Christmas. Um, we've used it twice so far. We ran into that swap meet, and I used it most of the day yesterday. I cannot say enough good things about this gun. Uh, the externals are pretty good quality. They don't, they're not GNP or VFC quality but they're pretty nice for the price you pay. The trademarks are a little bit ugly to a lot of people. I do find them rather ugly. We'll probably end up swapping out the uh, metal body on these just for a higher quality. I'll probably get them a GMP skull frog body or something along those lines just to pretty this gun up a little bit. Uh, it does have a fixed triangle sight so we're going to look into getting him a RIS unit, flip up sights, all that kind of thing just for upgrades. Uh, the cool feature this thing has is the bolt locks back. Lock back bolt, functional bolt release, bolt catch, all that kind of thing. Uh, the the uh, LE stock on it is nice, it slides pretty easily. Try, uh, fixed side carry handle, carry handle's not fixed on there, you can take it off if you want to and it has rails on there. So if you want to mount a, a scope or anything you can pretty easily just take off the carry handle. But it's all sturdy, there's little to no movement on this gun. Just the only thing that really moves a little bit is the handguard, which really isn't a big deal because you have to remove to put in the battery. Um, batteries were a little bit hard to find one that would fit in the handguard, which is what I have for rear-wired guns personally, unless I've got rails and I can just do a peck box. But in this case, you know, LE stocks, we can't rewire it to the rear unless we buy a whole new stock. So instead we just bought them an 11-1 LiPo, and this thing has been handling it like pretty extremely easily pretty much. Um, this thing, the trigger response on this thing is incredible with the slide though. I mean, you can just hear. Um, also, the rate of fire with an 11 one LiPo is awesome. It beats out my GNP by a mile. I mean, you can hear. I haven't gotten a chance to put it up to a chrono yet on rate of fire because field we can use. Their kernel only does FPS because they do real steel chrono. But if anybody, if anyone wants to put this on Audacity to find out the chrono, or we might just do it later to look at the possible runs per second on it, it's pretty impressive. I mean, you can just tell this this rate of fire is nothing to laugh out. We were using it yesterday, and people were just blowing away from this thing every every time we fired. It is actually pretty comical. I got a quite a good kick out of it. Uh, the internals, of course, are Lonex gears. They're 16 to 1 gear set. We also use a Lonex piston. I haven't gotten a chance to delve into the internals of this, mostly because my brother doesn't trust me with it, because I am a GBB tech only. I don't do AEGs. The only thing I really know how to do on AEG is correct the uh, right, because that's pretty much the simple thing you could possibly ever do to a gun. Luckily, <laughs> I haven't managed to screw that up yet. And also, can, so we got this from Clandestine, so it uses the Lonex, I believe the A1 motor, it has the uh, pneumonium magnets on it, so it's pretty nice, um, nice and sturdy, I mean, we haven't had any problems with this thing yet, it chronoed at 400 feet per second, almost on a dot, when we used it the first time as a swap mate, I uh, setting so, mean, that thing, is, this thing is perfect for field, has great range, the hop up is really easy to, to tune, as far as getting getting it tuned. My brother's been using .2s in it no matter how many times I tell him not to because he's not overly bright like that. And the polls show that peop more people use the common BB that they use is .25s. Yeah. <laughs> the um, actually, I was, yeah, he's been using .2s in it, so he's tuned the hop-up .2s. Uh, he's using it yesterday. I was running my bio valve 2.5s through it. I just, yeah, I had that 
pop up tune perfectly for two fives and maybe 30 seconds. It's just that easy. And the hop, this hop up is pretty impressive. That's I would awesome. actually say it probably rivals the hop up in my GNP. I'm not quite sure what hop ups in it exactly, but it works. So I'm not going to complain. I actually looked at the um, spikes on Audacity for you, whenever you shot it, and it looks like it's getting maybe. <laughs> I can't tell. I'm not. This is just a rough estimate, but it's around 25. Okay. Yeah. That's or a little slightly, higher. That's slightly faster than my GNP. Uh, we cr uh, one of my techs chronoed the GNP's rate of fire right around, I believe, 22 to 23 on an 11 one. Yeah, I think the way you shot it, it was like around 13 spikes in maybe a little less, or around a half second. So. <laughs> uh, if you couldn't tell, scaring the hell out of people is something I quite enjoy doing. <laughs> yep. And the Elonix A1 motor, if that's what's in it, that's actually a motor that people recommend people get to upgrade their guns. And that's already in it. And I believe these retail for 220 Yes, this uh, the standard handguard Elonix, both the 14.5 and the 10.5 inch, are $220 on clandestine airsoft. They also have a railed version. Let me pull that one up real quick. Um, these are actually the only guns clandestine carries. They are mainly a parts manufacturer. Uh, let's see, the RIS version that they have is actually back in stock, which it wasn't only ordered from my brother, otherwise we would have gotten him this one. It doesn't say what rail is on it, unfortunately. However, this, is getting, this goes for $250. On so, Podesta, which so, is a great price. I see a lot of people saying, well, what's the best out-of-the-box AEG for me as a starter into the sport? Uh, my, you know, my budget is $300. I see people all over the place, well, get a GNP, get a King Arms, get a JG and upgrade it, get a combat machine. <sighs> uh, Those are terrible. Yeah, excuse me while I go, you know. Uh, anyway, but I cannot recommend the Lonex out of enough for either the inexperienced player, the new player just looking for something out of the box, or even the veteran player just wants a good stock gun that's going to last them a long time. I know a lot of people recommend KWA for that. However, you know, the Lone X is almost half the price of the KWA, and it will it blows it out of the water by a long shot. I'm actually considering sell, I've actually considered selling my GNP to buy one of the Lone X. I just can't get around those trademarks. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna end up upgrading my uh, GNP actually. The bevel gear on it's wearing out, so I'll probably just re replace it with the 13 to 1 gear set. But anyway, got any, Will, do you have any questions about the one Um, I don't, but I will say, um, me and Shady are on uh, Airsoft Society, and that's the gun I see recommended by a lot of people. Uh, a lot of experienced techs, that's the main gun they'll recommend, because we get questions like that all the time on Airsoft Society. It's, what gun should I get for this budget, what gun should I get for this budget, and most of the time, the answer is Lonex. Um, some people will recommend, uh, you know, VFC or GMP, but um, out of the box, Peop the text on their form and a lot of people will recommend the Lonex and from what I've seen I recommend the Lonex too uh, whenever people ask that's what I'll say I'll say get the Lonex M4 from Clan Design um, he has a great store uh, so definitely check him out it's www.clandestineairsoft.com I'll have a link in the description uh, but overall I think the Lonex M4 is a great I don't really have any questions about it issue because you know it's an easily replaced thing is the sling mount on the rear sling mount on the stock is a little narrow and makes it difficult for it to accept some slings uh, we swap that out at the swap meet in like two seconds it's not a big issue it's just something that might get a little annoying uh, depending on the sling you want to use but per preferably I, t I put a buffer tube mount on and just run on a one point bungee on it but yeah. you know my brother is so yeah, we'll have links for all. We'll have links for the Lonex M4s um, in the description. Um, so make sure you go check them out. 
Um, anything else you want to say about it? Uh, we'll also have pictures and an album. I'm actually going to take, go take these pictures after we get done recording. I was planning to do it earlier, but I, I'm lazy. So uh, I'll go take pictures of it. We'll post those up in an album on the Facebook page, and I'll have Will edit them into the video as well. Yep. And next, we'll move into Tech Tip from Shady. a lot of people, actually I get messages daily from people saying, okay, what is wrong with my pistol? It's always jamming up, it will just lock, the, it, you know, it just locks up and I can't do anything with it. What do I do to fix this? The key is lubrication. Don't get dirty with this. The, the, the key is to keep your pistol well lubricated. Keep it clean. I personally, I'm kind of a clean Nazi about my pistols because I'm usually not a Nazi about anything especially cleanliness. So, our thing is, just make sure it's clean, make sure it's looped. I always clean mine after every game I go to. You really don't need to do that every two or three games. Uh, pistol magazines need to have silicon oil. Whether you're run, you know, if you're running green gas, that's great. You know, that has the silicon built in. But if you're running propane, you need to add silicon oil. Keep those magazines looped, keep it away from drying out, so that way you don't have any leaking issues. Uh, when you're doing your pistols, just take the slide off and make sure you run some. Just make sure you clean where the slide attaches right there, where, you know where the slide meets the pistol. Clean all that. Make sure you lube all, all of that. Your recoil spring and your recoil rod need to be clean and lubed regularly. Just make sure everything is nice and clean and moves smoothly. That way you won't have any issues. Anything else? Okay. No, I think that's about it for this week. All right. And uh, next, we're going to have an interview with Brian from Merlin's blog and Airborne Milsom, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Hey guys, uh, today we have Brian from Airborne Milsom and Merlin's blog spot here for an interview. Brian, how are you doing? Doing yourself? I'm doing well. Why don't you just start out and tell us a little bit what you do with Airborne Milsom? Uh, I, uh, my role with Airborne Milsom is mostly on the, the publicity side. Uh, getting and getting the word out, out talking to people like uh, like you guys podcasts and uh, just just getting it out there what is airborne milsim it's such a new concept um, right from the get-go there's a lot of misconceptions about what it is so uh, bringing me in uh, with my blog and whatnot and, uh, doing the advertising and the marketing for airborne milsim all right well what do you tell us a little bit about what airborne milsim is and what they do all right, Airborne Milsim is actually a collaboration between uh, the Taxim Media Group, which is the parent organization for uh, Max Mullins uh, Tactical Milsim Magazine. And one of the things we do is we go out and we help civilian tactical um, organizations breach into the Milsim community. And we approached um, one of our, our editor, Mark Anderson, actually uh, took this civilian airborne class in uh, Danella, Florida, and uh, so we basically we approached the major, who's a uh, former Marine Force Recon uh, Airborne, and uh, approached him and basically said, "Hey, listen, we think you should market this toward Milson. Uh, we know that there's a lot of guys out there that they take the tactical classes, they they spend the money in their gear and whatnot, and uh, we think you should market this toward Milson. So basically, what we've done is we've partnered up with this school in Danella, Florida. Uh, created Airborne Milsim, and it's a, a week-long class that we will be offering several, several different times a year, and um, basically it's, it's uh, Airborne, Airborne School. Uh, six static uh, jumps, uh, Max Mullen, and, uh, Mad Max is uh, going to be one of the jump masters, so not only are we going over jumping, jumping with gear, jumping with weapons, but uh, the tactics involved, you know, once you hit the ground. What, what do you do from there? So on and so forth. So uh, where is this event held? This particular event is going to be in uh, Denellan, Florida, at the Denellan Airport. Um, <coughs> excuse me. It's actually uh, just outside of, uh, well, not just outside, but it's on the West Coast, just uh, a little bit away from uh, Tampa, Florida. Okay. And um, where can you find more information about this uh, particular event? you go to www.airbornemilsim.com, it'll have all the information. Um, 
future events, pitchers, uh, if you're already qualified as airborne, you know, and you want to strap hand, get involved, uh, you can find out more information on that. And if you go to www.mindgames-productions.com, that will actually have the information on Operation Varsity, which is Saturday of the of the week long course. Saturday is going to be the final jump. You're going to be jumping into an, an ongoing uh, Milsom event put on by uh, Mind Game Productions. So basically, this game's going on. Uh, your final jump will be into an actual uh, quote unquote combat situation or Milsim situation. Uh, so you'll you'll be getting to use your skills right away. Jump right into an airsoft airsoft uh, Milsim event. That's pretty cool. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started in airsoft? Oh wow! Um, back when I was in college. Uh, uh, I, actually, high school. Actually, I, I bought my first Springer with my best friend, and uh, we literally ran around the house uh, shooting each other, popping each other with Springers, and um, it, it progressed a little bit into more into paintball because paintball was uh, more accessible, and uh, just went out into the woods behind our houses and stuff, and and played there, and you know, got got involved uh, um, mostly with the the paintball stuff. Uh, Fast forward a couple of years, got involved, you know, college, and, and really got away from all that. Um, married my wife. Uh, my brother-in-law was actually in the military in England, where airsoft is huge, and so he, we got to talking about uh, airsoft and uh, how much it's grown since I've actually left it. Uh, my best, uh, uh, one of my best friends here at, uh, that I work with, uh, he had actually played on a team here locally got me involved and I've been hooked ever since and, and uh, just really progressively great, uh, upgrading my kit and uh, my skills and my involvement with uh, Airsoft and Milson. So uh, what currently do you run for your kit? Uh, right now my kit's kind of in shambles. Um, <clears throat> um, I, I can't talk about my plate here too much. Uh, I'm actually running a prototype for Pantac USA right. and uh, as, soon as, as soon as I can I'll, uh, I'll, I'll be posting that video up on Merlin's blog spot but uh, right now I go in between the KWA uh, the wrist and the uh, KWA MP7 depending on uh, the situation I, I'm running in that's awesome um, so, uh, Shady you there yeah I'm here I just kind of sit back and listen at first I'm developing my own questions do you have any other questions so far for uh, Brian uh, Yeah, the, uh, the class itself is uh, $950. Um, I think if you register before February 1st, there's it's going to be $900. Uh, February 1st to February 15th is going to be the full cost of $950. And that, co that covers everything uh, for the event um, for those five days. Uh, the parachute, everything involved, all the equipment. Uh, you We're just expected to bring your load out and... Um, there's uh, food provided for lunch. Okay, now I know there's a lot of heavier airsofters out there, on me, me being one of them. Is there a uh, weight limit, per se, on these, on the jump, or is it kind of an anybody can do it? You know, I'm not I'm not 100% sure as far as that. I, I know you got to be a little bit physically fit to be able to do a couple push-ups. Um, me out. <laughs> uh, yeah, there, there is some... some because this is not free falling. This is a static line parachute. You have limited control of the parachute, and when you hit, it, you're hitting hard. And, and so uh, we need to be able to uh, eliminate or minimize the uh, the knee and leg injuries. Okay. Um, Brian, why don't you tell us a little bit about how did you get started writing your blog, which is uh, www.merlinsblogspot.com? Yeah. Uh, um. Actually, I started doing videos first. Um, I I was doing, I had a fire helmet camera for work, and I uh, was started bringing it to airsoft events, putting that on YouTube. Um, started getting involved with uh, airsoft squared. Actually, wrote my first review there, and, and, and got so much good feedback from it. Uh, then a buddy of mine uh, with DarkThreads.com, who was actually one of my main sponsors. Uh, convinced me that I should uh, write a blog, become my own brand, and, and brand myself that way. 
And so uh, basically, I just started off writing blogs on um, on uh, the product that I own, and I I still kind of do that today. I, I get a product now and then, but that I'll I'll get the review. Um, but uh, yeah, just just writing and, and, and being consistent, and getting it out there, and uh, that all stemmed from having to be the uh, public information officer for my fire department, and so that that's kind of where I got into writing to begin with. All right, it's pretty cool. Which uh, camera did you use to do that fire stuff? Uh, the fire helmet cam. Uh, how much do those run usually? Those, I haven't checked lately, but I think when I got it, it was uh, the 275, 300 range. Okay, me and my dad are both volunteer firefighters down here in Texas, and my dad's been talking about getting one to run on his helmet. Yeah, they're great. Uh, they're, yeah, they're very, very good. I would not recommend taking a condor, uh, contour or a a uh, GoPro into a fire at all. I can't handle the heat. I mean, GoPros have the waterproof casing, but uh, it's really the heat's going to get to them. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I I wouldn't recommend it, but I took it in the flashover, and it, it the camera still works. It's the SD card that, that uh, took a dump. Yeah, about, well, you know what? It actually survived. You just got to point to the point where it stopped operating. Uh-huh. And once it, once it cooled off, I used it on a fire, you know, not too long after that. Okay. And so, Brian, uh, Merlin's blog is one of the nominees for the Players' Choice Awards this year, correct? It is, yes. I'm very excited about that. Um, we haven't even been uh, up for a year, and we've already nominated. So Yeah, that's pretty cool. So you guys should definitely go check out um, all the links. They'll be in the description. It's Airborne Milsim, uh, Merlin's blog, and also all their links on Facebook. Um, anything else you want to talk about, Brian? Uh, yeah, if you guys, uh, the big announcement that we made at Shop Show, if you guys want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, sure, go ahead. All right, we uh, we actually announced the TCA, or T- Tactical Combatives Association, uh, at Shot Show. It's a venture between Mind Game Productions and Tactical Milsim Magazine, or, you know, the Taxim Media Group, and uh, basically it's the brainchild of Max Mullen, and it's taking Milsim to the next level creating a national association of, of Milsim players and giving them the competitive format that they need in order to basically get their game up. You know, we're, we're, we're basically going to start competing with each other. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're not going to do it in a force-on-force manner. Uh, force-on-force, it, it just either tends to turn into either speedball or it, it, it's not the best format. Uh, for the Milsim situation anyway. Uh, it, it works for others, but in, in Milsim in particular, uh, we want to be able to compete against ourselves. Uh, so we're, we're introducing basically a format similar to the Best Ranger competition, where you start off, you may have to ruck out for you know a quarter of a mile, half a mile, a full mile, depending on which tier you, you get into. Uh, and then you're going to have to do uh, several objectives in between that. It could be a kill house or a care under fire. Um, and it's very objective to keep that whole grading and sub- subjectiveness out of the competition. Mm-hmm. So, uh, And on top of that, things like the Airborne Milsim School uh, will be uh, offering classes, everything basic, you know, to two, two guns, CQB, troop movement, to possibly, you know, an air assault involving actual helicopters. Uh, so that that's all in the works. Uh, that if you want to check that out, that's at www.us-tca.com. Uh, it's there's going to be membership involved. Basically, get like a uh, player folder where you can check in, you know, skill up, get points for taking classes, get points for uh, competing in the uh, the regionals, the locals, all that stuff, and you know, move on to the national championships and and maybe compete. That's awesome. So um, yeah. The- I just want to say another good thing about people doing stuff like uh, Brian and the Airborne Milsim group and uh, Max Mullen is it gives a good face to Airsoft. As uh, you see, Airsoft has a bunch of adversity. Um, stuff like this is going to give Airsoft a good face um, with because it's more uh, noticeable when people are doing events like this um, outside of the Airsofters community. So uh, I know we all really appreciate what you guys do, and you guys are going to be um, – Great, so you guys definitely need to watch their pages because they're going to have some huge stuff coming up. Um, going to be the next, uh, could be a new era at Airsoft, and so that's great. Uh, fantastic to hear about. Uh, got anything else? 
Yep, that's about it. So, yeah, that's been Brian from Merlin's Blog and Airborne Milsim. Uh, thanks for coming on, Brian. Hey, I appreciate you guys having me. It's been a pleasure. Um, so, uh, thank you guys for uh, tuning into this podcast, and um, that's been our interview for today. All right, guys, this has been the Airsoft Podcast, episode number six. Uh, we want to thank everybody for listening, and don't forget to go on to our Facebook page, throw us a like, uh, subscribe to us on Facebook or on Facebook and on YouTube. Uh, we'll be bringing out our next episode here in two weeks, where we'll be doing a review of the WEPX4, and we'll be covering even more Airsoft news, and hopefully we'll have an interview with who was it will it's uh you may know him as squid from rainbow but he's no longer affiliated with rainbow he's uh with the aca or david with the aca so he's the uh owner of the aca which is the association of competitive airsoft and that's who we're trying to get on so all right well i'll definitely look forward to doing that interview and this review will be pretty awesome so make sure you all click that subscribe button thanks